for our course and on Tuesday we will learn the layout of steel structure layout of steel structure is very important um, as I covered in the syllabus we have five uh, categories homeworks exam one exam two exam three and mid and the turbo project guys can you watch this structure this structure is called steel structure storage or uh, warehouse or something is made from steel no concrete everything from steel every component in this structure is made from steel in this course in this course we will learn everything related to this structure each component we will learn how to design how to design trusses how to design connections between members how to design frames and uh, how to design steel building probably this structure is called industrial building what about uh, residential building what is the difference uh, we have something called composite structure what you mean by composite composite we learned it before in the previous semester that we have concrete structure concrete beam like this in this course we will learn steel beams steel structure sometimes your structure is composite what you mean by composite your slab is made from concrete and your beam is made from steel so we have composite uh, do you think concrete is good steel is good if you have composite your structure will be very good because steel is good in tension concrete is excellent in compression if you can set up a cross section and put concrete in compression and put steel in tension you have very or most efficient cross section anyway we will go through this in more details at the time during the semester so design of composite structure and finally we will learn a little bit about a steel bridge and i will go through the requirement by ashto how can i um, upload or the loading of bridge what is the type of trucks how much load what is the impact factor what is the fatigue design all of this stuff we will will be covered during steel bridge uh, to be honest with you until this part of the course it's um, typical steel design but for design of composite structure and the steel bridge including fatigue can be considered advanced steel design as you learned it before during the previous uh, courses we have external forces on this building we have a snow we have life loot we have dead loot we have wind loot all of these loads can be called external forces these external forces will create internal forces in th inside this building these internal forces can be axial force shear force bending moment and we learn it. these internal forces in structure analysis and the design course these internal forces will cause stresses 
and will be used in your design. In our course, we will understand how can we calculate the external forces, how much, if you are talking about the snow, if you are talking about life load, dead load, wind load, all of these types, I will cover them during this course. And how can we determine the internal forces? We will not do this by hand, but we'll do this using RISA 2D. Once you get your internal forces, axial force, shear force, and bending moment diagram, we will learn how to design the components of the steel structure. We have different components. Probably your uh, structure made from truss, made from frames. What is the design of connections? How can we construct this connection, welding or bolted connection, whatever the type? Quick review about steel. Guys, in this course, we are talking about only one material. Only one material. We don't have any other material. One material, steel. So I would like to remind you of something. If you have a piece of uh, steel and you are applying tension, do you remember that? Tension force. During the application of this tension force, we have elongation, delta L. So at zero force, we have zero elongation. If you increase your load a little bit, you have elongation. Increase your load a little bit, you have more elongation. More load, more elongation. More load, more elongation. So finally, we have a table with load and elongation. We can convert this load to stress. Do you remember that? Sigma equal the applied force divide cross-section area. This rod or this steel member has cross-section, probably a circle cross-section. If you divide the applied force by area, you can get stress. So I can get stress, 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 stress. Area is constant but the applied force is variable, as you see. We have strain. I can convert this elongation to strain. Strain equal elongation delta divide original length. This member has original length L naught. If you divide this elongation by L naught, you can get strain, 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 strain. Once you get another table for sigma and the strain, if you construct a relationship between strain and the stress, you can get this relationship for this curve. This curve can be called stress strain curve for steel. Just to make sure you understand this point. At this location, we have plat plateau, a horizontal relationship. At this location, we have something here called F yield, yielding stress. It's very important. We have something called F yield, yielding stress of steel. This term is very important. How can I figure out the yielding stress? Please construct the stress-stress relationship at the plateau. We have here F yield. At the maximum stress, the highest point in the curve, we have something here called F U ultimate stress. So ultimate stress is the highest level of stress you can reach, highest one. 
This is called ultimate stress. We have yielding stress at the plateau relationship. We have yielding. This story is very important to learn it, to understand it. How can I figure out the uh, mechanical properties of steel? Yielding stress and yielding strain. Uh, I'm sorry, ultimate stress. Uh, guys, this relationship consists of different parts. The first part is this part, which called elastic region. We have linear relationship between stress and strain. This re linear relationship, you can figure out the slope of this linear relationship. This slope can be called E, modulus of elasticity of steel. The slope of this relationship can be called E, modulus of elasticity of steel. E for steel is 29,000 KSI or 29 million PSI. Please keep this number in your mind. Youngest modulus of steel is 29,000 KSI or 29 million PSI. How can I figure out the youngest modulus of steel? You need to set up this test, tension test, to get this record between B and the delta, and then you can calculate the stress and the strain. Then you can draw the relationship between stress and the strain. Then you can figure out the yielding stress, the ultimate stress, the youngest models. Just for your information, stress strain curve for steel is identical in tension and compression. I'm sorry, what you mean? I mean, if you have a piece of metal, steel specimen, and you are applying compression, P like compression, this compression will cause contraction, delta, in the specimen. So if you can record at zero load, we have zero contraction. At a certain level of load, we have a certain level of contraction. If you increase the applied load, you have more contraction, more load, more contraction, more load, more contraction. Then I can figure out the value of stress, which is P divide area. I can figure out the value of strain, which is contraction divide original length. So finally, I have a relationship between stress and the strain. If you set up this relationship between strain and the stress, you can get the same relationship. This is the meaning of this sentence. Stress, strain, curve is identical in tension and compression. The same. And also, if you figured out the value here of F yield, the value here of F ultimate, the value here of E will be the same if you get these values from tension will be identical. Any questions so far, guys? If you have any question, let me know. Just to remind you for something, just to remind you for something, if you go back to the previous course, concrete design, stress strain curve for concrete was something like this. And in, in compression, this one in compression. If you would like to draw the stress strain curve for tension, will be something like this. Wow. Can you watch? Concrete can support this level of stress in compression, but can only support this little level of stress in tension. So concrete is very weak in tension very strong in compression. For steel, this one in tension and this one in compression, identical. In tension like in compression.
both of them the same behavior. We have different type of material of steel. Yeah, I know it's steel, but sometimes we have different types of steel based on how much carbon do you have. The percentage of carbon will make different types of steel. Just for your information, we have plain carbon steel. The carbon is less than 1%. We have low alloy steels. Uh, the carbon percentage is less than 5%. High alloy or specialty steels, high strength steel, uh, we have higher percentage of, steel, of carbon. Anyway, our normal steel will be the first one, plain carbon steel, which is the common type of steel. Guys, uh, probably in the uh, during the semester or during the course, I will not give you the section, uh, I'm sorry, the properties of steel, like yield stress or ultimate stress. Probably I will give you something like this, A36, A572, or A992. These are the common types of steel. So, if the given steel is A36, that means F yield equal 36 KSI, F ultimate between 58 to 80 KSI. If I give you the type of steel is A, 572, that means F yield equal 50 KSI, F ultimate equal 65 KSI. A, 992, F yield is 50, and F ultimate is 65. The two component or the two mechanical properties of steel, which are very important, yielding stress and ultimate stress. One of you will ask me a good question. What is the value of E? What is the value of E? What is the value of E? As I told you, E called youngest models. E is constant for any type of steel, 29,000 KSI or 29 million PSI. Whatever the type of steel, your youngest models is the same. The only difference is yielding stress and the ultimate stress so i will not say plain carbon steel or low alloy steel or high alloy or specialty steel no i will tell you hey we have a steel a36 we have a steel a572 we have a steel a992 all of these information from ai sc the steel structure manual any question if you have any question, let me know. Guys, we have different types of cross-section for steel. Sometimes your cross-section of the steel member looks like this. Eye shape. This eye shape probably different from this one to this one. Can you watch this? slob in the flange it's not here probably your section looks like a channel like this one probably your section looks like angle like this one probably your cross section looks like t like this one so we have different shapes but let me explain something sometimes we form these shapes by something called hot rolled steel section. We need to heat the steel to be melted, to be liquid, and then we can deform the shape that you are looking for. At this time, 
this cross section can be called hot rolled steel section rolling the steel while it is still hot to the desired shape and allow it to be deformed with no resulting loss in ductility if we can watch this video This is a Dalina University production. This film will give you, as a student, an overview of the processes within a hot rolling mill. The film is made in collaboration with SSAB in Borlänge. Here, the steel material is processed plastically at very high temperatures. Rotating rolls reduce the thickness of the material and produce long strips that can be used for manufacturing products such as steel plates. We will be going through the various stages of the hot rolling process. Each stage requires knowledge and experience to ensure a high quality product. The material is heated in the reheating furnace, rolled in the roughing mill, coil boxed, roll in a finishing mill, cooled and coiled. Before the slab can be processed, it must be heated. The slab is continuously cast and has the dimensions required for the final product of a correct weight, width and thickness. These furnaces heat the material to about 1200 degrees centigrade. Two walking beam furnaces feed the material through the oven. The heating is especially important as it affects the properties of the material. If the material is not sufficiently heated, incorrect material properties will arise. This is due to carbides and nitrates failing to dissolve. During the heating process and the transport to the roughing mill, the hot material reacts to the oxygen in the air and a mill scale consisting of oxide is formed on the surface. If the oxide layer remains on the material during rolling, the layer risks being rolled into the steel material, adversely affecting the surface quality of the final product. The material must undergo a mill scale cleansing before rolling. In order to cleanse the surface, water is sprayed at high pressure, 160 bar. After the material has undergone a surface cleansing, it's sent to the roughing mill. Here, the material is rolled from its original thickness of 22 centimeters down to about 3 centimeters. This is a very significant reduction. At this roughing mill, a powerful four high rolling mill is used, that is, two backup rolls and two smaller working rolls. The backup rolls are often cast steel rolls. The working rolls must have very smooth surfaces and tolerate high temperatures and wear, as they are in direct contact with the material. So, as you see from this video steel raw steel must be heated up to be liquid and then you can deform the shape you are looking for this shape or this shape or this shape or any other shape this is called hot rolled steel section guys please keep these expressions in your mind when we will go to Riza 2d you will learn or you will see this statement one more time. Hot rolled steel section meaning the production of this cross section is done by heating the steel first to be easy to be deformed and then cold by water or whatever the process.
we have different shapes we can deform the hot steel to different shapes the first one can be called w shape this information are very important please keep it in your mind w shape your cross section looks like i section like this this cross section can be called w shape and this w shape will be written like w 18 for example 18 times 50 18 means the first number means the nominal depth of this cross section 50 means the weight of the unit lens of this beam as you see this beam in the real life looks like this that's right if you measure unit lens which is one feet the weight for this part of the beam will be 50 pound so 50 means 50 pound barefoot this one is very important guys w means w shape your flange looks like this exactly 18 or whatever the first number means the total depth of the cross section the second number what is the whatever the number the second number means the weight of the unit length let me ask you a good question and this question uh, question will be needed in this course guys if you have two cross section w 20 time 50 and another cross section w 18 time 47 which cross section is lighter which cross section is lighter 20 times 50 or 18 times 47 do you have answer which cross section is lighter do you mean what is the meaning of lighter less weight less weight mm. no Brock you have to give me an answer it doesn't depend on anything we have W 20 times 50 we have another cross section W 18 times 47 which cross section is lighter I answered this question just a second before yes yes yeah thank you Alex thank you Brock thank you Melvin thank you Cody yes guys you have to understand 20 times 50 means i agree with you 20 is the total depth i don't care 50 is the weight of the unit lens so every one foot we have weight 50 pound the other cross section the depth is 18 that's fine i don't care but the weight of unit length of each each one foot we have a weight 47 pound so which beam or which member or which cross section is lighter this one i have a specific question i didn't ask which cross section is safe no it, uh, it depends on the design but i'm asking for a specific question which cross section is lighter so you have to understand what is the meaning of the second number what is the meaning of the second number the second number can give you the weight of the unit length okay keep it in your mind because this point is very important one more thing if you go back to my leo for lecture notes I uploaded tables of steel section. 
if you open this file, you can find W sheep table one one. For W sheep, for example, if you are looking for cross section W thirty six time three hundred thirty three, we have cross section W thirty six time three hundred thirty. Thirty six is the total depth. Three hundred thirty will be the weight of the unit length of the beam. But what about the other dimensions? The flange width, the flange thickness, the web thickness, all of this stuff, you can get them from this table. Can give you what is the web thickness, what is the flange width, what is the flange thickness, what is the total depth, what is the cross section area. Everything you need about this cross section, you can find the section properties from this table. But just what is the name of the cross section? This table will give you everything you need about W shapes. Okay? Everything you need about W shapes. The second one, we have another cross section. Another cross section. The American standard can be called S. For example, 18 times 70. But before going, uh, going through the name, can you watch this shape and this shape? Uh, by the way, W shape can be called white flange shape. This flange is wider. And this thickness is flat. But for American standard, this flange is not wider, is narrow. And this thickness is not flat, like this. Can you watch the difference? So the American standard is I shape, the white flange W shape is I shape, but the only difference is the shape of the flange. This flange is wider. Sometimes we can call W shape is white flange shape. This one is American standard. This flange is less wide and the thickness is not flat. The same meaning S18 times 70, for example, 18 is the total depth, 70 is the weight for unit length, bound bare foot. So guys, S18 times 70, S indicating type of shape, which is American standard, the two numbers giving the depth in inch and the weight in bound bare foot. If you go back to my uh, file and you go down more, 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 here you, here you go. We have S-shape section properties. For example, if you are looking for S24 times 100, what is the cross section area? What is the total depth? What is the thickness of the web? What is the uh, width of the flange? What is the thickness of the flange? All of these section properties will be needed during our semester. The next one, angle shapes. Sometimes your cross section looks like angle. This one is used mainly for trusses. 
if you go to Walmart and watch the uh, roof or the uh, slab or the floor of the Walmart, you can see trusses made from angles connected together. This angle is written by three numbers. L means angle. Six times six times three quarter. The length for this leg, the length for the other leg, three quarter is the thickness of any of the two legs because both of them will be the same thickness. So first leg, length, second leg, length, thickness of the leg. Sometimes we have equal angles, equal legs, six times six. Sometimes we have different lengths of angle, different lengths of legs, I'm sorry. So this one will be called six times four times five eight. Five eight is the thickness for the short leg or the long leg. Both of them with the same thickness. Six is the length of the longer leg. Four is the length of the shorter length. Also, if you open my file and go down more, 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 you have here angles. For example, for angle eight time eight time one eight thickness, you can figure out the section properties of this angle. All of this stuff will be needed during the design. Also, sometimes your cross section looks like channel, like this one. Channel will be called C, means a channel, 9 times 20. 9 is the total depth, 20 is the weight per unit length of this beam. Sometimes your cross section looks like T. This T is made from white sheep. If we have white sheep, like this one, that we learned before, and you divide this shape at this location. So this part is this one. So it's produced by splitting W shape at the mid depth. Uh, we can call it WT. WT 18 times 105. 18 is the depth for this T section. 105 is the weight per unit length for this beam. Sometimes we have different shapes like pipe, like uh, hollow sections, like uh, bars, or sometimes we have built up section. Built up means we have angle and another angle connected together. We have a channel and another channel connected together. We have a steel blades connected together to build something called built up sections. Can you see here? We have angle. We have another angle connected together by something here. We can construct a new section which you call built up section. So guys, please keep in your mind, we have different names, W, shape. We have S, shape. We have L, shape. We have C, shape. We have WT, shape. The first one, W, 15 times 30, for example. The second one is 15 times 40. L, 5 times 5 times 3 quarter. C shape is C, 20 times 25. WT, uh, 30 times 105. This shape looks like 
I, this shape looks like I, this shape is angle, this shape is a channel, this shape is looks like T. You have to figure out what is the name to open this file to figure out the section properties for this name. We have here everything related to channels. Whatever the name of the channel, I can figure out the section properties, everything in this cross section. If you go down more and more, you can find everything for different, for T section. We have the name and what is the properties or what are the properties of this name. So this file will be needed during the exam, during the homework solution, during the term project. This file tables of steel section is very important. Any question so far, guys? Do you have any question? Yes and no. Yes, the exam is open book. So you can open what you want. No, I'm not sure I will give you the exam like uh, previous semester, uh, one hour, uh, I'm sorry, uh, during the day for 24 hours, you can solve it at any time or at a specific time for a specific uh, day. I'm not sure about this point. But I don't like to receive exams after due date. I don't like this. I don't like to um, ignore my rules. Because last semester, after the exam is done, next day, probably the day after, I re I still receiving exams. It's not good. So probably I will change this a little bit. But the exam is open book. You can open what you want. Sometimes your cross section is called cold formed section. We don't need to heat the steel to deform it to the required or the desired cross section. But this will be more easy for very thin steel cross section, like corrugated sheet, like uh, very thin channels. Let's watch this video. And see how can we deform the Cold form. Cold means cold form sections are used for a number of different applications, primarily associated with either the building envelope or light steel structural elements used in walls, partitions, or floors. For building envelope, narrow strip steel is rolled into the sections required for purlins or sheeting rails that support cladding and sheeting. It is also pressed to form gutter profiles and flashings. For light steel framing sections, the narrow strip is rolled into C sections that are built up into walls or whole modules before delivery to site. So guys, did you see any heat? There is no heat, just cold. Steel is deformed to the desired sheet. But if you remember, if you remember from this video, the steel used to, def to be deformed is very thin. So you can more uh, easily deform it to the, to the desired cross section. So structure shapes of this type are created by bending thin material such as sheet, 
steel or bleed into the desired shape without heating. This is called cold formed section. Guys, do you remember what was the design philosophy? The design philosophy, we have M ultimate and we have Fay MN. We have ultimate applied moment coming from 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 life load. And we have design moment coming from nominal design moment multiplied by phi. The design moment must be greater than or equal the applied moment. So we have design value. We have ultimate value. The design value must be greater than the applied value. This is the design philosophy for LRFD load and resistance factor design or limited state design. We have another uh, method which you called allowable stress design. We will not use this during our course. And we learned what is the difference between both of them. Well, uh, how can we apply the factor of safety? Anyway, this is the design philosophy for steel, which is the same for concrete. Just to remind you, we have something called load combination. We have dead load, we have life load, we have a snow load, we have wind load, we have earthquake, we have uh, different types of load. Actually, in this course, we will cover these four types of load. Dead load, life load, snow load, and wind load. How can I do combination between all of them according to A, S, C, E? We have different combination and I will use the maximum value for this combination. The first one, 1.4 1 dead load, if you consider the only dead load alone. If you consider life load, so 1.2 plus 1.6 life load, which is the more common combination. And to keep in your mind, what is the meaning of S? What is the meaning of R? What is the meaning of LR and L and D? Here is the definition for these values. D, dead load, S, no load, E, earthquake, L, life load, R, rain or ice load, and W, wind load. Just to, uh, uh, to be more specific, I will focus on wind load, uh, snow load, dead load, and life load. Okay, we will learn how to calculate the wind and the snow and the dead and the life load. We have example here, which is very easy. Uh, given in this example, the value of dead load, the value of so D, equal 109 floor life load what is the meaning of floor life load floor life load is l equal 46 roof life load lr 19 snow which is s 20 determine the controlling load combination so okay go ahead and they make all of these combinations if you don't have a value, your value will be zero. What you mean? I mean W, which is wind, will be zero. Earthquake will be zero. Uh, R is zero. So go ahead and do your combination, and which one will be the maximum one? Let's start with the first one. 1.4 dead. So 1.4 time 109. Second one. Uh, 1.2 dead load, 1.6 life load, and 0.5 LR or S or R. 
So 1.2 dead, 1.6 live, 0.5 LR or S or R. What is the value of D? 109. What is the value of L? 46. What is the value of LR? 19. What is the value of S? 20. What is the value of R? 0. So which one I will use? 20. So your final answer 1.2 times 1.109, 1 1.6 times 46, plus 0.5 times 20. Get the value. Get the value here and keep going. The next combination 1.2 dead, 1.6 LR or S or R, 0.5 L or 0.5 wind. So please go ahead and get the value here, get the value here, get the value here, get the value here, get the value here. The maximum value will be the controlling load combination. Okay. So we covered this before, I believe in concrete design will be the same scenario and the same philosophy. So guys, today, I introduced what is the meaning of this course. We have a different shape of structure. Every component in this structure is made from steel. And what is the meaning of stress strain curve for steel? And we have three mechanical properties. Yielding stress, ultimate stress, and youngest models. Uh, we have different types of steel based on the, the percentage of carbon. We have different shapes of cross-section based on how did you deform this shape. Mainly, we have hot rolled steel section. You need to heat the steel first to be liquid. Then you can deform this steel to the desired cross-section. This cross section can be W shape, can be American standard, can be angle shapes, can be uh, channel or T section, or different types like bars, pipe, hollow, blades, or you can build what you want, which you call built up section combine different parts together or you can get called the formed section you don't need to heat the steel you can deform it which uh, when it is cold but this is happening for very thin material what is the design philosophy we have applied load will give you ultimate moment or ultimate shear and we have design moment or design shear your design must be greater than or equal the applied ultimate load and we have load combination according to a uh, ASCE American site of civil engineer uh, standard we have different combinations for dead load, life load, wind load, earthquake, uh, snow load, all of this stuff can be combined together based on these seven combinations. Which one I will use? The maximum one. Next meeting, I will go through the different components of steel structure and what is the meaning of these components so let me stop here and that's enough for today.